So today is actually a very um, exciting day for me because, uh, you know, we have made that journey right off from uh, relationship development intervention to this and that and so many other things. And I think I've ended up with what I call the ABCs of Life Smart Parenting. I didn't put the title there yet because then I have to explain what each one of them is. So I didn't do that. So eventually our sharing, whatever we are doing, has uh, converged around three things. One is Anand's Adventures YouTube channel, which just kind of happened on its own. The second part of our sharing is the Balakendra. So I don't see the Balakendra as a specific uh, program that you have to do. You know, I see it more as a model, just like I see Anand's Adventures. I mean, when you see a video on Anand's Adventures, the idea is not that you have to do that particular song or particular video, right? What I'm trying to draw attention to is the way the guiding is happening, uh, the way certain things are unfolding in that video, and use that regardless of whatever experience you are creating, right? So when you see Anand's Adventures, you see a little bit of the guided participation because you see uh, Ujwal and Anand, you know, in many of the videos, but still it doesn't give you a full picture because you just see them in specific experiences that are frozen on the screen, so to speak, right? But when you do the Balakendra, you get much more of a behind the scenes look as to what happens. You know, you can get your own taste of that experience. So A for me is Anand's Adventures, B is the Balakendra, and C is then create your own experiences, right? So we're not saying you have to do either anything from our video channel, nor are we saying you have to do anything from the Balakendra one, but there is a lot of information there that you can use to create your own experiences. Now, I had a breakthrough on the last part, that is create your own experiences. Uh, I have a you know friend in London who just pops up every three, four months and will drop me a note saying, hey, Rama, have you checked this out? This is what I'm looking at now. And so he showed up last week and uh, he was sharing some literature on perception, action loop, and constraints-based learning. And I'll talk about some of that a little bit later. But when I saw that, I mean, I'm, I'm a total novice, I'll say right in the beginning, because I've just started looking at this literature. But it's just very interesting because the way it's described, it is giving me some language. You know, for a long time, I thought the videos are there and I've been giving some ideas on how to look at the video. But I always thought that if I could give a clearer, like a video guide, you know, this is what you can look for in this video, that would be really helpful for people. But how do we do that? So I'm finding that the constraints language and the uh, perception action, those are really helpful. So I think once we start following that consistently, I think you'll be able to better use whatever resources we are having on the channel. So, um, so Manju, are you still there? Or I think she stepped away. Okay. Anyway, let me start with the video first, and then I'll come to the Balakendra. Now, the video I wanted to talk about was the one I just recently shared because I saw many people have seen it. So it's a recent video. So hopefully it's more in the memory. The one that I shared was the uh, the biology song, right? Uh, did you see that, Chinjita? And I think maybe Dr. Vijay, you might have seen. Bindu had seen it, I think. I think she mentioned she saw it. So if you have yes, seen yes. video, any, you know, what strikes you when you see that video? And I've, I've made some comments, but, uh, you know, just for you, what stands out from that video? Jinjita? Uh, yeah. So I think uh, I saw the video, but then came up to the conclusion that this is not the video for us as of now. But I like that when when I want to take further the body parts and all those things, I can include that. Uh, I can include this uh, song. Yeah. We are not at that level yet. So I thought, right. uh, yeah. So that but was... It, uh, okay. It, you're including it as a different issue because, you know, there is a whole range of videos. Yeah. So yeah. Some yeah. may work and some may not work. But yeah. just in terms of, you know, the... And, and you'll, you would have seen this kind of a guided interaction in many of the videos. 
but just in term of the guided interaction, what struck you? Because I think that's why we find that videos of Ujwal and Anand do really well, because I think it's giving some insight to people on how you can guide people in these experiences. And, yeah, and so I think I, that's a key. Uh, yeah, one thing I've noticed in all the Ujwal research and Anand's video is, Ujwal sir never, you know, says uh, directly to Anand that follow me, you know, he, he does give some instructions. It's not that he doesn't yes. give. Sometimes he does give instructions. And it's very, it's not a very lengthy sentence, very short and concise. And um, another thing I noticed that they, they usually stand opposite to each other. And he doesn't keep on correcting him. You know, <clears throat> so these are the things now I'm trying to emulate with Vidusha. That, okay, you know, since today we said, okay, we'll just both of us watch it together. And she was sitting next to me. Why? Because if she's sitting in front of me, I keep looking at her and my mind goes into the, oh, no, she's not doing this good. She has to do this. I said, you sit next to me. Both of us watch it because those things are new to me also. So yes. I thought, you know, at least she can listen to it. She can watch it. So yes. let's just start with that. So that has come. That thing has come within me. Yes. After watching Ujwal sir's and Anand's videos, that how Ujwal sir is teaching Anand. Yes. He's not saying, Anand, you're not doing this. No hands, yes. hands here, hands here, hands here. <laughs> no, yes. nothing like that. Yes. He does correct him sometimes, yes. but not very much. Yes. So I thought, and and I, I noticed the calmness between them. Ujwal yes. sir has a sense of calm. And because, you know, that yes. transfers to Anand. Yes. He is he is smiling and he is doing it and it looks like that he's having fun. Yes. Vidusha, in very few songs, I've noticed that she is having fun with me. I yes. am very, I am trying to be more fun and I enjoy it. But because of my instructive ways, she, uh, she loses the fun part. So I thought, let me just try this. Now. Yeah, so that Did is anybody, what I Anybody else have any comments? Because I think a lot, of, and that's why we've been sharing a lot of the videos, because I think there's a lot to observe. And I've been observing Ujwal for about now, close to a year. He's, Anand started last October, so it's almost exactly a year. And he's always teaching that way. And this was just, you know, the songs the, that you are seeing, many of them, like the body part song and so on, are not even in Anand's curriculum, right? He's basically doing it just to share it on Anand's adventures. So we'll talk a little bit more about that aspect of it a little bit later. But even the, his Bharatanatyam pieces, right? The ones where you'd expect a correction every minute. No, hold your hand this way. He'll do it. He'll say, Anand, no, keeping your hands like this, lift your hands, you know, things like that. But it's not constant correction, right? It's, it's not that, that much. Okay? And any ideas why he manages to not correct that much? Any thoughts? Maybe he wants, uh, Ujjwal sir want Anand to have that experience of uh, dancing and what joy it gives. You know, when we go into correcting, the joy takes a back seat. So I think that that's, that's yeah. yeah. What I realized was it has to do a lot with imitation because Anand has learned Bharatanatyam for a lot of years and the style of teaching Bharatanatyam, especially a lot of the senior teachers will usually sit and they will strike and so when they strike to keep the beat and the person is trying to do it there are a lot of verbal instructions right but if you have noticed Rujwal all the way through he's dancing with Anand right he's dancing so, with him all yes the time. so so there's a very there's an unwritten expectation but it's there from the first class that I'm going to do it you just you know you're invited to participate that's it and so there is much little of, you know, he doesn't have to give that many verbal instructions. And a lot of times you've, you've seen this in the Pada Veda video and all, when he says you have to turn, he just say, you know, instead of saying turn to the right, he just naturally use that. So I tell him, you know, you use most of these techniques somehow, I don't know how you use them. I just tell you, we found this in a relationship development intervention or something, but he seems to naturally use a lot of the techniques that we have learned the hard way over the years. And, uh, and but, I, but I came to the conclusion that a lot of it has to do with imitation. 
So when I ran into this new literature on perception action and constraints learning, I was really intrigued because what they're saying is when you're looking at movement, it is not just movement. You know, whenever we move, there's a perception involved in it, right? You know, and, and a lot of this work has happened in the context of sports coaching, right? So whenever somebody's doing in, you know, whether it's football or baseball or any game, they're perceiving something and in response to that, they are moving, right? And so the saying that when you do these drills, repetitive drills, it doesn't really prepare you for the movement in context because you don't have the same conditions. So that's really where a lot of this constraints-based, constraints-led learning has come from. So which is basically saying that there are three types of constraints. One is you know, at the personal level, second is the task constraints, and third is at the environmental level. So they're basically saying that you're manipulating these three sets of constraints and let movement happen. So I had a light bulb moment. I said, Ujwal, I think you really are close to a constraints-led approach because, uh, you know, so I excitedly called him. I said, I need to talk to you because I think this is what you're doing. You're just setting those constraints and let Anand figure out what's happening. He's not telling him. So the reason I picked this biology song, it's very obvious in the last part, right? Ujwal suddenly starts moving to the side. Anand has no clue what step is coming, right? He doesn't know the song, right? So many of these songs, remember, Anand doesn't know them, right? It's not his curriculum, right? The body part song, animal song, all these are not his curriculum, right? So Bharatanatyam, he's learning. This one he's just doing to share something with the community. That's all. They just started doing it for the 100-day project and they just continued it. But I suddenly realized that those experiences are actually very helpful for him. I said, Ujjal, please continue this with Anand because these are the songs that he doesn't know the song and all he have, can really do is see what Ujjal is doing and just copy it. That's all he can do, right? There's, there's nothing else. He doesn't know the song. He doesn't know the words. He doesn't know the song. He doesn't know the movements, right? So the only thing he has to do is imitate. So I've noticed that he's very alert in these videos, right? He's watching. You know, if you, if you, if you look carefully at these videos, more than his Bharatanatyam videos, he'll be actually watching very carefully because now he has to figure out what to do next. But he'll also see a lag because he doesn't know. So he'll probably come in a few, you know, a little bit later, right? And he would not have been able to do this at all some years back, right? So because he's learned Bharatanatyam for a while, his imitative skills have come in enough that he can watch someone like Ujwalan at least follow along. He may not be perfect, but he can, you know, at least keep up. You know, he's, he's mostly there. He's mostly doing all the steps. Maybe not correctly, but he's doing them. So, so that was a light bulb moment for me. I felt like he's already using, if you're not instructing, maybe what you're really doing. And so they say that in the constraint approach, one thing that I picked up was you really coach by manipulating constraints, right? There are the three types of constraints and you're really, coaching is all about manipulating those constraints. So a story behind this Ganesha Suti, which Anant just performed. And I felt for some time that Anant is actually expressive, but the reason he cannot do it is because in Bharatanatyam, they first teach you the foot movements, hand movements. They come to the face almost to the end. And by the time they're teaching him, he's got too many things to track and he's not able to do anything with the face, right? That's the sequence in which they teach it. But when you see him theater, He's far more expressive because the movements are simple. He's just walking across the stage and so on. He's much more expressive. So I felt this for some time. Like I've been telling Ujwal, I think we really should, you know, do the hand gestures and facial expressions separately. And if we, he were not using his feet, I think he will get the expressions. It so happened we were in the Ayurveda hospital for a week. So, so the time came. So I said, Ujwal, we really need to tape this. He needs to perform on, you know, for the Ganesha celebration. And we are not going to be able to, you know, have him in a place where he's dancing. We are in that hospital, so we cannot do it. So quickly we taped just the sitting down part. And then what I realized is I don't know any of the steps, right? So when I see the steps part, I'm like, okay, I have no idea. He's been learning for 10 years. I don't know the steps. But what I realized was I can actually sort of keep up with the storytelling. I may not know the mudras correctly, but who cares, right? I can roughly follow the storytelling. Right. So we sat there and I was just doing it with him, you know, and that's why it's, that is why I shared that recording of him and me, because 
that's how we prepared, you know. So first we had, so we are manipulating these constraints, right? So instead of doing the whole dance, we have imposed task constraints that we're just going to do the hands and eyes. And then we're also changing the environment because I'm doing that part with him. So I realized that it actually worked very well because if the whole dance is there, I can't keep up. I, I don't know the steps, right? But the storytelling part, I'm sort of able to do it, right? Because I also watch it so many times, right? So I'm kind of able to get it. So I told Ujjwal, I'll do it. You know, I will not do it perfectly. You can fix that, but at least I can sort of, you know, do what I can. So that's how we are preparing. And uh, so we have this back and forth. And so I think I'm really excited about this direction because when you start thinking of coaching, not as, you know, directly instructing people, but by manipulating constraints, right? Then you can really you know, narrow down the task, broaden the task. So for example, if you're attending the Balakendra session, each one of you has a different set of constraints. The parent has one set of, you know, the personal task and environmental constraints. The child has them. So think about it. We have all these variables. So you may all attend the same session, but go back and do something entirely different, right? So one person might say, okay, I'm my child likes to sing, so I'm going to do this Mama Mana Ramana, I'm going to do that one. Another one is going to say, my child loves to move and I'm just going to do the movement part, right? So I think it's really interesting because uh, different people can attend the same thing, attend the same exact class, but walk away with entirely different things to work with. And I think that's why the group is very helpful because usually what, ha what will happen is you'll have a class and that's the end of it. Everyone goes their own way, right? But in, when we have the group, like a Life Smart group, there's ongoing conversation. So the more the people share what they're doing and how they are working with whatever was done, I think the more everyone learns. So I think we have an opportunity to really scale the learning from this Balakendra because you're there for one hour in a group experience, but as we share what we are trying and how we are trying and what works, I think everybody can learn more. So that is sort of why I came to this ABCs, we've, you know, at the end of, I don't know how many years, we have a very simple delivery system. Forget all the fancy names. We have a bunch of videos on the channel. We have the Balakendra experience with which, you know, Ujjula and I are collaborating quite closely on that. You know, I was the one who was suggesting uh, maybe do this as a family immersion experience because I don't see how you're going to have, you know, six neurodivergent kids or 10 neurodivergent kids each doing their own thing without the parent being there. I don't know how that's going to really work. So right from the beginning, I was suggesting to maybe just do it as a family immersion experience. And so I think that's the way we are going. And it looks like not everybody can attend every time. So we have anyway started videotaping and sharing and that helps everyone. So I think all of this is emerging, but I think I'm very excited about the Balkendra experience because I think it's something where we are very much in the loop, right? It's not like, just an organization offering it and we're just consumers. We are very much in, in there, interacting with them, helping us craft this thing. So I think these are exciting times for that reason. So that's really it, the ABCs, you know, you have the videos. And the, one of the key points I wanted to make today was, it doesn't matter whether you want to do a particular song, whether it's a Bharatanatyam, you know, small thing. So even if you take Ganesha Suti, you're not going to do that right now for sure, right? Uh, but what I'm trying to do with pieces like that is I also shared, you know, Ujwal coaching him just on the hands and um, expressions part, and then Anant and me doing it. So when you see that, it's giving you, when you see all the three, you're getting some ideas about how you might work with the constraints. I know that some of you have said you're interested in the facial expression because that's one of the things that, you know, you can do swimming and skating and all these things, but it really doesn't address expression, right? And so when you do the Balakendra, you, you're seeing that right in the beginning, you know, the, the, once you have storytelling, once you have drama, expression is there, right? So if I share things like that, you can be thinking, okay, how can we manipulate the constraints? You know, if I really want to work more with the expression, maybe I need to relax other things in this process, right? So 
it doesn't really matter what level anand is or whether he has done multiple years or whatever these kind of techniques and strategies and uh, you, you know what's going on in terms of guided participation all that you can see in those videos and especially when we have the discussion around it so i think we have entered in sort of a new phase of this 100 day project because i'm having a little bit of this language of constraints and perception action and so on i think i can you know i've been trying to do that but i think i'm now having a more systematic vocabulary for talking about what you're seeing on the videos because that vocabulary will help you think about what you can do with it so i think we've sort of you know moved forward a little bit in the last week and as i learn more about these things i think more will happen so let me again pause here so we have the our delivery model whatever it is is just basically the video channel the balakendra and create your own experiences it's as simple as that so no need for complex terminology and so on i think once you have the experience then the terms make sense right because once you've seen the video for example and then i say oh you know by the way think about the constraints i find that that's more powerful than you know giving a whole bunch of conceptual which is what we usually get a whole bunch of conceptual things and then we're trying to apply it right so if you lead with experience i think it's more natural and it's more powerful and it's easier to implement it so that's the key thing uh, so manisha is here and i just wanted to mention a little bit with what's happening on our website uh, so manisha are you there yes ma'am so manisha's son uh, morpheus he's the artist on our team now uh, i've been on the you know i've done a lot of work with the phd project and one thing that always struck me about what they talked about was uh, diversify the front of the classroom to diversify the student body and so kind of always think about that why should all the teaching for neurodivergent learners be only done by neurotypicals right so if you can have some of the neurodivergents being part of the process so now anand's there in the part of the process and now morpheus is there also as part of the team delivering the you know overall uh, 100 day experience and everything else so uh, manisha if you want to say a few words about morpheus yeah really he's enjoying it, uh, the whole process uh, last year we have started with uh, making calendars and then i have seen that he's enjoying that earning part so whatever comes his way right now uh, he's doing small small things it's uh, part of uh, anand's work projects also so he is enjoying that journey i find and that is motivating him for working more hard and uh, he was slow earlier but now he is uh, trying to be fast so let's complete this uh, commitment you have to fulfill that commitment that is the main thing and okay. this comes with this type of work only if a continuous process like this happens with somebody uh, either neurodivergent or neurotypical i think this every time helps each and every person but in his case it's like a treatment also because he was earlier undergoing some neuro problem he has overcome that area but this is a definitely a positive area where he is getting some work and he is earning out of that and he is enjoying that i am able to earn something out of my work and with that only i am purchasing my materials that is the satisfaction he is getting out of this so thank you ma'am uh, for thinking about morpheus uh, and definitely uh, he is a uh, he loves to do art work but this way will work more thanks manisha we got off to a good start with the ganesha picture the first week so ah, i think you're like going to be what having we say, what we say having... in india it's a sri ganesh <laughs> so we started the... with the first thing yes exactly so i was happy to restart the you know 100 day and uh, you know he's also Same. done the I think every child every child should try to do some work seeing his work like ganesha you have uh, shared and one of the child i think he, uh, he or she is some somebody has drawn and colored i enjoyed that thing <laughs> that somebody is 
also trying looking at his work so it's always beneficial for the community and also when you think about think about the theater arts for holistic development there are five tools you have the movement and dance music and rhythm storytelling drama arts and crafts so anand mm -hmm. i think goes across all the four not much the arts and crafts he's actually just started sketching classes now so hopefully he'll do a little bit in that with that fifth tool soon as well but uh, morpheus has been filling the gap so they they've written blog posts where you know anand would be talking something about the animal song and uh, i know the robbers in ramana tata's ashram uh, morpheus yeah. had gone to the ashram for that so i think that's how the collaboration started and then uh, now he's mm, uh, it's a uh, i think a one year journey uh, they both started with one uh, blog and then I, that day only i told you that uh, they will do something <laughs> so still continue so i'm hoping you know that over time this is the way it grows that the neurodivergent learners are as much a part of this you know it's not that we are doing things to them or for them but they're equally a part of this community contributing to what we are doing so that's sort of my longer term vision with all of this so this small know. small steps definitely work for gaining confidence also and then you know it also gives them some satisfaction that uh, because now he sees you know his uh, pictures are there in the videos too like in the skeletal system circulatory system the, the circulatory system sketch he had uh -huh. done so you know you'll see some of his artwork he has pieces. learned also out of that he has learned also that these are the systems which uh, he may may have forgotten they in class 7th or 8th he has learned about it and he has just forgotten everything but again those flashback memories again uh, he has drawn and he has enjoyed the best part is that he is enjoying if i say something that you do something for, uh, and this is good uh, when you just uh, i just pick up something for him he he would not try he would just sit for 5 to 10 minutes and say no mama and if uh, somebody has given some okay i'll do rama ma'am ne kya bheja like that what she has sent uh, rama ma'am ke liye kaun sa karna hai like that so i feel that these things certain changes which we we cannot ignore these sort of changes and this uh, works as a development personality I know, development i know manju always engages lavanya in different projects different things so i think it's a good way to proceed i think we're going to run out of time so i i think a new thing has started where it doesn't let me restart the call for 9 or 10 minutes so i think let's join back let's finish this because i think we only have a oh we have 5 minutes we can talk a little bit but once we quit remember that it will there be a gap it will take about uh, today morning i suddenly saw this alert saying that you cannot restart for another 10 minutes 9 to 10 minutes so what we can do in the meantime if you have any questions to discuss any ideas you know to also give you a little bit of time to think about it and then let's join back uh, one of the things i want to do in the second part is there are several of you here who are doing the balakendra experience and i'd like to hear from you about what each of you is doing you know once you have the balakendra experience then how are you working with your child after that so that will be a good conversation to start Manju's daughter Lavanya is in a different class, and so we can hear from her what, uh, what's. I think it's a little bit different, but let's see what's happening. So that's what I want to start with in the next part, and then we'll talk about a few other things. So thanks, thanks to all for being here. And if there are any questions, we do have a few minutes, so we can address a few questions and then start. Please start. Ma'am, um, it's not a question, but a comment. Uh, you are such a dedicated group that uh, i really felt nice to join this group uh, but obviously i don't follow every day schedule with my schedule kids schedule but obviously the live classes chinmay do attend little late but they are a great experience because really the calming and peaceful effect is there and it transmit to me also and second thing is the youtube video availability makes me that initially for that first video i shared with you i was with chinmay doing myself and then i just went into the kitchen i was just saying you do it you do it you're doing it 
and it helped him after two three repetitions that he was so comfortable with seeing the sir on the screen and your son doing it he didn't know the son's name but he was copying and he could finish it so that was really surprising only thing is for your 100 day project i may take 300 days um, to follow it every day but the good part of it is as you mentioned the five areas movement dance music rhythm art drama and storytelling i really appreciate myself and chinmay that we daily he daily do art and craft he is kundan lover and he does beautiful envelopes as um, um, manisha ma'am mentioned he earn from it and uh, he makes coaster i'll share sometime with you he daily paints one or two pictures maybe like we went to the picnic and he said we'll draw aeroplane we'll draw boat and he really likes to the texture colors and he explores a lot in that then we started with your group we started really daily storytelling and to my surprise we have almost 2000 books at home and daily we finish at least two or three and his reading is superb now so and we retell the story he has to tell me the story what he read and it's random time so that is very consistently happening with us and the music and rhythm after our consistent effort of this we are struggling to teach him casio for since long and we are not able to figure out about though he sings beautiful hindi songs and he loves those shlokas also so in that uh, he is this week he finger isolation ke sath he started twinkle twinkle and mary had a little laugh so i am happy that in a day with my schedule and his schedule we can able to do these many things and really somebody doing it guided participation without less instructions helps amazing like it's a instinct that you can demonstrate you can have a positive words and you can appreciate the child so the smiles on chinmay's face had increased a bit and become little more expressive so really it's helpful when and it's like i see the videos when i'm cooking or something so not extra time involved in that but inter i mean application in the day time happens without seeing them so really i appreciate uh, the consistency and the exposure you are giving through it it's really nice and i'm thank you for you took me for this thing in yeah thank you ma'am thank you i think we're running out of time so thank you i actually wanted to comment on a couple of things you mentioned but let's do it in the next round so if you have any other anybody has any other questions uh let's uh join back in about 10 minutes thank you